Polygon editing in 2014 has been completely rewritten to make it much more easy to use. In this demonstration, we'll take a quick look at how it all works. Polygon editing can be found in the utility group, which is at the end of most of the ribbons. In the new interface, you'll notice that it is now split from point editing. Hitting polygon editing brings up the polygon editing tool palette, which you'll notice has a call out to the right of it telling you what is going to be happening. The most used tool is the edit tool, which allows you to select, edit and add polygon points. So in fact most of your work can be done just using this single tool. Let's create a new polygon. You can see from the callout that we're currently working on a new polygon and that it's composed of lines. Rather than rectangles, we're showing the points in the polygon and we're only going to allow editing of the active polygon. So if we press Ctrl and click, we get the polygon points. A double click will bring up the close button. So we can now see from the callout that we're in polygon 1, and if we would like a new polyline, we hit the new button, and a second polyline belonging to that polygon set is created. You'll see if we select these different polylines. It is reported in the callout. This is polyline 2 and this is polyline 1. Let's create a second polygon, so we hit the new button again and digitize the polygon. Let's change the style on the polygons to be able to see them more clearly. So if we select a polygon and right mouse, then we can see here the settings. So we can go to the settings, which brings up the style, and let's change our lines to specified and make them 5 points. You'll notice that the polygon being worked on shows the points for the active polygon, and if we select a different polygon, the points are shown on a new active polygon. So when we select, we're also activating the polygon. Let's try another couple of controls. So if we wanted to just add points to the existing polygon, we would make it active and use control click to add points. So this one is active. So if we hit Ctrl and click, we're adding points. If we hit instead Ctrl Shift click, this will insert points. To edit the points, we simply select a point and then it becomes editable. We can use Shift click to select multiple points and then all three. That I've selected become editable. We can also use the bounding box select by clicking in a blank area and dragging. This selects multiple points, which then are also editable as a group. This particularly useful when we're doing things like assigning values to specific points. If you're uncomfortable with the new super tool, you can use the old add points tool and this works in a similar manner. So let's add a new polyline to polygon 2. So we hit the new button and this time, we don't need to use the control key to add new points, we just add directly. The only other selection mechanism you might need is the paintbrush selection. So if we use that and then paint pulling down the left mouse key, we can just paint over points to multiply select them, and then these of course become editable. Deleting points is similar. Polygon Eraser will work only on the active polygon, so when we click the deleting point, undo is available from the quick access toolbar, but of course it's often easier to use Ctrl Z. The last tool on the toolbar is the cut option, so we can take a polygon and we can cut the polygon in two. You'll notice that the default is to just make a cut. So this is now two separate pieces of polygon. You can see when we select it, it now selects the two different sides and if we were to drag it, you see it is now split. The settings for cutting are stored on the Make Polygons dialog. We bring up the Make Polygons dialog, 
which allows us to make polygons of specific shapes like circles or rectangles based on some input points. There's also a setting sheet, where we can change the default here to delete the line segment when cutting. So if I now apply this and use the cut tool, the segment will disappear. You might wonder what restrict to active means in the callout. Well, this means the action will only be performed on the active polygon. So if I, for example, use the selection brush and paint across, it picks up any points that the mouse crosses over. But if I go to the second polygon, nothing is picked up when I'm in restrict to active mode. However, if I turn off restricted to active, you'll notice that the selection points show in all polygons that are displayed and now as I select then points will be selected on all the polygons. When we select polygon to make it active, then initially nothing is selected. If we were to click a second time, all the nodes are selected and the whole polygon can be dragged to deselect. Click out outside the polygon and you unselect anything. That's selected. That covers all of the creating and editing of polygons, and you'll notice it's very few icons. So where have all the operations on the polygons gone that we used to have in the polygon editing? Well, these are now available on the mini toolbar. So if we select a polygon, and then we right mouse, we get the mini toolbar set up for that polygon. So for example, we might want to close a polygon, open a polygon. We might want to join connect a polygon. So to connect, we would do shift selection on the two points to be connected. Right mouse and join. Similarly, if you select the polygon complete polygon and say close, you will create a closed polygon. If you wanted to perform operations such as smoothing, you can hit select and hit the smooth button. Interpolation similar. And reduce. Selected polygon. Or equal space are also here on the mini toolbar. Changing the Z values of the polygon is also made active from the mini toolbar. So if we select a polygon, and this time, just a single polyline and we right mouse, we can say assign a value, equals and choose a value. So we use the increment, which we can change here to increment the value. So I put 10 and now. Equals right mouse and we can change this to 15 equals and we need to look in 3D to see what is happening. In our 3D window, we can turn on our two polygons, use the focus and you can see the changes in the Z values. If we look at the inspector and now we select polygons, we get some information about the different polygons of polylines. You can see this 15 meters. This one is 0 meter. This one is also 0 meter. In 3D, we can also edit the Z values. Now I have to use the selection tool to select the polyline, and then we get the 3D editing tool. We may want to do this just to some points. So we will use shift select. That's selecting those three points. Or we could use the paintbrush to select multiple points. Using selection tool, we can now edit the Z values. Let's change the Z value of this point line using the right mouse button. So we select right mouse. Let's select make this. Minus 20 equals, and we can see how it moves up or down. I'll just finish the demonstration by showing how the similar tools apply to point. 
So if we turn off the polygons and we turn on some points and instead of polygon editing, we now switch to point editing. There is a selection tool which behaves the same as the polygon in that we can use. Either select point by point. Or we can add points using control. Or we can select using a bounding box. Which we could then apply a shift to or perhaps delete. We also have the Selection Paintbrush, which we can see selects the points, which we again might just hit the Delete button. Or we can use the Interactive Eraser to delete by painting. And just for backwards compatibility, we've kept the Add Points option so that you don't need to use Control when creating new points. This concludes the short demonstration. We've seen how to use the new tools for editing both polygons and points. And we really hope you have an enjoyable experience with the new toolset.